Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial. Today we'll be looking at one of the ways you can create a position time graph that will measure some value and then show how it changes over time. So without further ado, let's get into it. I've spawned in a demo here right in front of the Draymore hangar. And as you can see for this tutorial, I'll be using a 2x2 monitor, although you can do the exact same thing with a 1x1 or any other monitor. Moving on, there are a few other things going on here. Firstly, you can see the vertical lines moving from right to left and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Then you have the horizontal lines which basically just stay the same, so we're just drawing those on. And finally, the actual line or curve itself that can be changed based on what we set our throttle lever to. Of course, if you were actually using this graph in game, it would probably be displaying something like speed or level of your fuel tank. We will also be going over how to change the maximum of your graph in the microprocessor settings. And getting into the workbench, let's go ahead and make a new microprocessor and you'll want to create two logic nodes, one for video and one for your value. Now go ahead and change the video node to an output because this will go to your monitor. Head on to the logic editor and there's going to be a few things that we need to sort out before going straight into the code. Make sure to add a property slider for the maximum as well. I'm going to make mine 0 to 1000. Firstly, you'll obviously want some way of inputting the data into the Lua block. So I'm going to grab a composite right and set the channel count to 2. Now take the composite right for on off and plug that back into the other right and set its start channel to 3. Now the reason we need to have an on off composite signal is because we're going to use a timer to move the graph. So grab the RTO timer from your inventory and connect that to the composite right. Then connect the same timing node into the reset button. This will reset the timer as soon as it expires, producing a perfectly timed on off burst, which will be the foundation of the graph code. Finally, add a constant on signal to keep the timer running and you can add a property slider to set the length of the timer. I like to set my minimum to 0.1 and maximum to 10 and interval to 0.1. Now place on the Lua block and connect it to the composite and video signals. After deleting everything that's already there, the first thing we want to do in our Lua code is actually input all three values. So that's fairly easy. Just get two get numbers and one get boolean. Make sure you double check that all channels match. For simplicity's sake, we'll call the variable that we're trying to graph A. The next thing you want to do is incorporate the maximum, so in the next line, type A equals A times 64 over maximum. That way, when our value reaches its maximum, then it will cancel out making 64 the maximum, which is the height of the monitor. Now, to move the vertical lines right to left, we need to first create a variable. Let's call it line and define it outside the onTick function so it doesn't keep going back to zero. Then write an if statement that says if timer is true, then subtract 0.5 from line. I found that 0.5 works well because adding one every time makes the lines move too quickly on screen. Now you'll notice that counting up will make the lines move, but they'll keep going in one direction. For that reason, right after that if statement, write line equals line percent sign 11. The percent sign is an operator called modulo which divides and then gives the remainder. So everything that's under 11, for example, 9 mod 11 will make 9. And numbers over 11 like 12 will reset to be 1. This is a crucial step to drawing our lines because it turns our constantly increasing variable line and creates a circular number line. Let's quickly test this. So in the onDraw function, let's display our lines. First, choose a color. I'll use transparent green. Then, write your draw line command and make the y coordinates 0 and 64. And both your x coordinates should be line. Repeat the same process adding 10 to the x coordinates for every subsequent line until you get to 60. This will make our lines 10 pixels apart, which corresponds with the 11 that they will move because of the modulo function. For this test, I'm just going to assemble a little base with a throttle lever and a battery. That's all you really need right now. Although we're not going to need the throttle lever for this specific test, we will need it later to actually move our graph. Now spawn this in, and let's see what happens. Now as you can see, our lines are moving, but they get delayed when they finish their 10 pixel loop. This is a simple fix. Go back into your logic editor and create another if statement that says if line is equal to 10, making sure to use the double equal sign, and subtract 1 from line. This should be enough to keep the lines moving in a continuous motion. Spawn it in again, and there we go. That was pretty much the hardest part of the tutorial. Continuing with the code, let's draw the horizontal lines. These don't move, so just space set a few starting from y equals 64. Notice that I kept the same spacing here as I did on the vertical lines, which is 10 pixels. I'm also going to change my color to white because I want my line to look different from my graph. Finally, drawing the line that will be displayed on the graph. To do this, we'll define a bunch of variables, depending on how far back you want your line to go. In my case, I'm going to define 14 including A, which is a real-time value. And in the timer if statement, we want to update each one. So set each previous letter to the one above it in the alphabet. Make sure to do this exactly as I do because the equal sign in programming means set equal to. So if we take B and A, we want to set B equal to A, not set A equal to B. 
Repeat this all the way down the list of defined variables. Now in the onDraw function, we want to draw a line between each set of points. Recall that we have 14 variables, so if each line takes two of those, we'll need seven lines. To actually draw your line, you'll want to write 15 and 14 for the x-coordinates of our first line because we're using points A and B, so use corresponding x values for all other points. For the y-coordinates of the line, we'll want to use our variables, except multiplied by negative 1 and increase by 63 because we want the line to be 0 at the bottom of the screen. Repeat the same procedure for all the other 6 lines and that's basically it. And that's that. Now we have a working graph in Stormworks. Now I know there are many other ways to do this, but this is just my two cents on the matter. If you do enjoy my content and want to see more, hit that like and subscribe button. And don't worry, these are both toggle buttons and you won't have to hold them down. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.